Hello Waste 2 and welcome to week 2 of your Outdoor Learning and Creativity Masterclass which includes the John Muir Award and the SQ Personal Development Award. Now this is set to go out on period 7 on your Monday but don't worry if you need to catch up at another time because the lessons and the assignments will still be in there for you to access and catch up. Anyway, let's begin. What will you need for today? You'll need a pen or a pencil, a piece of paper, and we'd like you, before you start this lesson, so pause and come off, to download your own masterclass booklet. This will be found in your assignments under PSE Monday Period 7, John Muir Award, week 2, January 25th. You'll see that it's a document that's attached to your assignment, so you can download it and edit your own copy. Um, and we'd like you to work from that at a later point in today's lesson. Okay, right. The timeline for today is here's your, you're going to have your learning intention and success criteria. You're going to have an escape room entry pass. You're going to be watching a video. There's going to be a sequencing task and a self-evaluation self and exit pass. Here we go. So today we are learning about why John Muir was a significant individual. So there's three layers you can aim for each one of these. And it's, I can explain in detail who John Muir was and why he was a significant individual. So that's the top level one you could aim for today. So write that down if you fancy uh, going for the green level there. Um, I can explain briefly who John Muir was and list two reasons why he was a significant individual. So that's your yellow level there. You might want to aim for that one. Or you can aim for, I can list at least one reason why John Muir was a significant individual. And that's your red level there that you came for. So pick one of those just now and write that down at the piece of your paper. That's your target for today. So here we go, your escape room task. Your worksheet with questions and tasks on it is in your masterclass booklet and this one's on page six. You must try and complete the worksheet in four minutes to reveal facts about John Muir. If you complete the worksheet within four minutes, this is you provisionally escape. We will go over all the answers as a class in the next slide. So go to page six of your masterclass booklet and attempt this task. Pause the video here. Here are your answers. Number one is April. Number two is 1838. Number three is Dunbar. Number four is a conservationist, number five is the United States, and number six is a farm. Check and change your answers. And once you've done that, now we're going to watch a video on the story of John Muir. On April 21st, 1838, John Muir was born in the world's greatest country, Scotland. Dunbar, Scotland, to be exact. In 1849, at the age of 11, John Muir and his family moved to the United States. They first settled at Fountain Lake Farm for seven years, which is in present-day Marquette County, Wisconsin. They homesteaded 160 acres, and this place is thought to be one of the first places in American culture where any American thought to preserve nature for the sake of nature John described the area as sunny woods overlooking a flowery glacial meadow and a lake rimmed with water lilies. After seven years at Fountain Lake, the Muir family moved to Hickory Hill Farm near Portage, Wisconsin. John Muir's dad was harsh, and he had the family work from dawn until dusk. But in this harsh disciplinary environment, John and his brothers got short periods of free time where they would explore the fields and woods of the Wisconsin countryside. He continued to fall in love with nature as he grew up. And eventually, John started inventing things, some being accurate clocks and some being wondrous devices, one example being a device that tipped John out of bed before dawn. In 1860, at the State Fair in Madison, Wisconsin, John took his inventions and he won admiration and prizes. During this year, he also entered the University of Wisconsin. He was a good student, but he dropped out after only three years to travel to the northern United States and do many odd jobs throughout the land less touched by civilization. In 1867, Muir had an eye injury that gave him wanderlust, 
because he could not see for a month. But when his eye healed, he decided to look into the wilderness. His adventure started when he decided to walk a thousand miles from Indianapolis to the Gulf of Mexico. Then he sailed to Cuba and then to Panama. After that, he sailed up the west coast of the United States and in March of 1868, only one year after the eye injury, he landed in San Francisco. John Muir quickly decided that California would be his home. The reason for this was because he was captured so fast by the state, by his travels in Yosemite and the Sierra Nevada. After his first time in this new landscape, he built a pine cabin, his home, in Yosemite. After some time, in 1871, Muir discovered living glaciers in Yosemite, and he created a theory of the glaciation of Yosemite. This was very controversial at the time, and because of this, he began to become known throughout the country. In 1874, Muir wrote a series of articles called Studies in the Sierra. These articles launched his successful career as a writer. Eventually, he moved out of Yosemite to Oakland, California, and he traveled to many places from there. In 1880, he married Louis Wanda Strenzel, and they moved to Martinez, California, where they had two daughters, Wanda and Helen. In his now fairly domestic life, he partnered with his father-in-law to manage a family fruit ranch. But since that was not enough to feed his lust for wander, he continued to travel to Alaska, a place he loved. He also went to Australia, South America, Africa, Europe, China, Japan, and many, many times to the Sierra Nevada. Muir became a serious writer, publishing 300 articles and 10 books, all of which recounted his travels talked about his philosophy on the natural world, and encouraged everyone to go to the mountains. Eventually, Muir wrote another series of articles that talked about the devastation of mountain meadows and forests by sheep and cattle. These were published in Century Magazine. After that, the associate editor of Century Magazine, Robert Johnson, and Muir worked at fixing this destruction. So in 1890, because of the efforts by Muir and Johnson, Yosemite National Park was created by Congress. John Muir also helped the creation of Sakosha, Mount Rainier, Petrified Forest, and Grand Canyon National Parks. Because of Muir's extensive efforts on land conservation, he is often called the father of our national park system. Many people suggested to Muir that some sort of association should be made to protect all these new national parks from stockmen and others who had ruined the boundaries of the parks. So, in 1892, he and his supporters created the Sierra Club. In Muir's words, the aim of the Sierra Club was to do something for wilderness and make the mountains glad. He served as the president until he died. In 1901, Muir talked about President Theodore Roosevelt in his new book, our national parks, and two years later, in 1903, Roosevelt went to Yosemite to visit Muir. There, the two of them created the foundation for Roosevelt's conservation programs. Even with the support of the president, the Sierra Club had many battles over Yosemite and the Sierra Nevada, one being the campaign to prevent the damming of the Hetch Hetchy Valley inside Yosemite. But in 1913, Muir lost that battle, and one of his most favorite glacier-carved valleys was dammed and a reservoir was created to supply water to San Francisco. Muir was right about this controversy, though, because only three years later, the public was in outrage over this dam being created. Thus, the National Park Service Act was created. This made sure that the national parks would be preserved and managed for the enjoyment of all Americans. And in many ways, this controversy over the Hetch Hetchy Dam sparked our nation's conservation movement. Unfortunately though, Muir did not get to see the National Park Service Act be enforced or get to see our conservation movement start. As he died on December 24th, Christmas Eve, 1914, from pneumonia. He was 76 years old. John Muir was a farmer, inventor, sheep herder, explorer, writer, and he was America's most influential naturalist and conservationist. He remains an inspiration to environmental activists everywhere, even to this day. So why should you care about John Muir? Well, today the earth is suffering from pollution. Carbon dioxide levels in the sky are at an all-time high. Climate change is happening very fast in the spectrum of all time. Knowing about John Muir may hopefully inspire you to help the natural world. And also, he is still part of the environmental movement today. Which, in this age, we need more people like him. So he's a good person to know about.
well, that was an introduction to John Muir as a person there. Here's your next task. You're about to hear details about significant events in John Muir's life. Your task is to read or listen to each event and make notes to help you in your next task. So that was just a short introduction to John Muir as a person. You're about to hear details about significant events in John Muir's life. Your task is to read or listen to each event and make notes to help you in your next task. Here we go. John Muir was born in 1938 in Dunbar, near Edinburgh. As a boy, John loved exploring wild places. In 1849, when John was 11 years old, he emigrated with his family to the United States. John lived and worked on his family farm in Wisconsin for 10 years. He still enjoyed studying, exploring and inventing things. Eighteen sixty seven. In 1867, John went to work in a factory. When a tool he was using struck his eye, John was blinded. After several weeks, in his, several weeks his sight came back and when, he, when it did, he knew that he wanted to explore the outdoors more than anything. John went on a 1,000 mile walk from Wisconsin to Florida and then sailed to Cuba. In 1868, John said settled in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. He worked as a shepherd and that gave him time to study the natural wilderness, climb and explore glaciers. John led many visitors who wanted to explore this beautiful and rugged area. Muir loved everything about nature, the insects, the wild animals, the plants, trees, rivers and mountains. He understood that all of these things were connected to each other. 1872. In 1872, John became a writer. He went on to write and publish many articles and books about looking after nature. John's love of nature led him to want to protect it all. John was one of the first ever conservationists. A conservationist is someone who wants to conserve or protect natural places or living things from being destroyed. John Muir believed that people should do something to help protect nature. 1880. John married Louisa Strenzel and he worked as a fruit farmer and rancher. John and his wife had two daughters, Wanda and Helen. John began to give talks about what he believed in. These talks, along with his writing, helped people to understand the importance of the wild. 1872. In 1890, he helped in making the Yosemite Valley in California one of the first national parks in the USA. With others, John formed the Sierra Club in 1892. The Sierra Club is an American organisation that still works today to protect the environment. 1868. John's books and talks made him famous. In the 1900s, President Roosevelt asked to spend time with him and they went camping in Yosemite. They camped in the wild country and when they woke up the next morning, they were covered in a light dusting of snow. 1914. In 1914, John Muir died of pneumonia, age 76. John Muir's message that we all need to enjoy and care for nature is just as important today as it was when he was alive. Today, the 21st of April is John Muir Day in Scotland. In 2014, John Muir Way was opened. It is a long distance path that stretches for 134 miles or 215 kilometres, across Scotland. It runs between Helensburgh in the west through to Muir's birthplace, Dunbar, on the east coast. John Muir's passion for encouraging people to enjoy the outdoors lives on across the world today. Comic strip task. Your task is to create a comic strip page detailing John Muir's life to show why he is a significant individual. You need to choose six events from the previous slides so you can rewind the video that you think showcases why he's important. This is to be completed on page seven of your booklet. You can draw the event with comments, the event, the year. Remember to do it in chronological order, which means doing it from the earliest part through to the later part. 
And if you just want to write it, that's fine as well, but we'd love to see some drawings in there. So, that's us coming to the end of the lesson. So, you'll need to check and see if you've achieved uh, which success criteria you chose at the start of the lesson, your green, yellow or red. So, can you now explain in detail who John Muir was and why he was a significant individual? Or, can you now briefly explain who John Muir was and list two reasons why he was a significant individual? Or, can you at least list at least one reason why John Muir was a significant individual? You can check that page 7 to see how you've done. You might have achieved more than that. But here is your final task. It's your exit pass. On page 8 of your booklet, there is an exit pass for today's lesson, with the statements about John's life. However, each statement has a word missing. Using the word bank at the top of the page, fill in the blanks to complete the statements. So that's your period 7 Monday today. Now remember, if you didn't have time to do it period 7 today, of course you can catch up at a later date. The John Muir booklet, your masterclass booklet that you've downloaded today, don't submit it yet. We don't need this until we've completed it and you'll also be uh, using it in school hopefully when we get back at some point. So don't submit it yet. You keep it for your records and keep it because that's what we're going to use to get your awards by the end of it. Well done everybody. Take care.